guys, it's March 19th, 2024, and today we're going to go over Matthew 5, and before we start um, reading in Matthew 5, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come into the room and join us, so we're asking the Holy Spirit to come in and join us and, um, you know, to be with us during these videos, we ask for you the Holy Spirit um, before we start reading God's Word today that you will reveal to us what God wants us to understand and to get down into our hearts Holy Spirit please convict confirm and bring discernment to each of us also please unite together the body of Christ um, we plead the blood of Jesus over the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet and that's going to be it right now. We're going to just start. So I have my guest here. And we are going to start in verse 1. Where is my mouse? So okay. chapter 1, <laughs> verse 1. So Matthew 5. Chapter 5. My yep. yeah. All right. So here we're going to start. All right. So it oh. says, oh, don't mind the dogs. <laughs> of course, we start when oh, yeah. we start. So... <laughs> Hopefully everyone loves dogs. So, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountains, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit, those devoid of spiritual arrogance, arrogance those who regard themselves as insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Blessed, I'm just going to skip over that, are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those, are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, and self-controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Blessed, con content, sheltered by God's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed, anticipated, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in heart, those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. Blessed, spiritually calm, with life, joy in God's favor, are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love, are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritually alive with life, joy, and God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward is in heaven. In heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible, for in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked on by people when the walkways are wet and slippery. You are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence 
and recognize and honor and glorify God your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to do away with or undo the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass from the law until all things which is foreshadowed are accomplished. So whoever breaks one of the least important of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least important in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness, uprightness, moral essence is more than of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it is said to the men of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be guilty before the court. But I say to you that who, everyone who con continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice against him shall be guilty before the court. And whoever speaks contemptuously and insultingly to his brother, Raka, you empty-headed idiot, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of the fiery hell. So if you are presently... So if you are presenting your offspring at the altar, no. So if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and while there are, gosh. <laughs> so if you are presenting your offer at the altar, and while there you remember that your brother has something such as a grievance or a legitimate complaint against you, leave your offering there at the altar and go. First make peace with your brother, and then come and present your offering. Come to terms quickly at the earliest opportunity with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court, so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you are thrown in prison. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you will not come out of there until you had paid the last cent. You have heard that it is said you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who such so much as looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you stumble and leads you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. For it is better for you to lose one of, the, of your body parts than for you, your whole body, to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble and leads you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. For it is better for you to lose one of your parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has also been said, whoever divorces his wife is to give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except on the ground, grounds of sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it is said to the men of old, you shall not make false vows, but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord as a religious duty. But I say to you, do not make an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet. Or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you are not able to make a single hair white or black. But let your statement be, yes, 
yes or no, no, a firm yes or no, anything more than that comes from the evil one. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, punishment that fits the offense. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person who insults you and, or violates your rights. But whoever slaps you on the, your right cheek, turn the other towards him. Simply ignore insignificant insults or trivial losses and do not bother to retaliate. Maintain your dignity, your self-respect, and your poise. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also, for the Lord repays the offender. And whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it. You have heard that it is said, You shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the, hot, the best or higher good for your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on those who are evil and on those who are good. And he makes the rain fall on the righteous, those who are morally upright, and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brothers, wishing them God's blessings and peace, what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know the Lord do that? You therefore will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integ integrating godly value into your daily life, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. I believe that ending is what you were looking for yesterday. Yeah. I know it's kind of funny. I was thinking about that when you, <laughs> when I was reading it. So let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. So these, the Beatitudes, that's kind of funny because I think this is, um, like, I don't know if anyone's watched the Chosen uh, series, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it because it kind of brings you know, all of these, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, and the book of Acts, like, kind of into, um, like, a movie form, so you can, I don't know, I feel like it kind of helps you understand what you're reading here, kind of, yeah. like, goes together, so I like that, um, in the, you know, in the first part here, he's like saying all the people that are going to be blessed, you know, the, yeah. the ones that are poor in spirit yeah. and the ones that mourn and the ones that, you know, um, are gentle, the ones that are hunger, that, you know what I mean? They hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness. So kind of like what's happening, like there's a lot of people that, you know, feel like it's, it's hard to get through the day because we see so much you know, crap going on in the world yeah. and we're all pretty much like, when is it going to end? <laughs> you right. know, like we're kind of like hung, we're hungry for the, the righteousness to right. come and, and everyone to either wake up or, you know, God's judgment, one or the other yeah. is going to have to happen. Nobody likes, nobody likes evil. Like people, you might, you might be mean or whatever, but when people do it to you, you never like it. Mm -hmm. It nobody likes it. And they, I you wonder, just. Do you ever wonder, like the people? So I've always had this th thought of like, when I wake up in the morning, and I'm talking about myself. Mm -hmm. When I wake up in the morning, there has never. I'm 51. There has never been a day that I have woken up where the first thought in my mind is. I'm going to be mean to somebody today. Right. Or, um, I hate so-and-so. Yeah. Like, the, my first thought is never anything mean. My first thought is, thank you, Lord, for waking me up again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's my first thought. And then, 
I don't really, like, I don't, there's not really a time where during the day I'm, like, thinking about being mean to somebody or, like, purposefully. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there might be some times, like, when I'm at work and someone's annoying me or, you know, or, you know, there's just, like, it's mostly work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, trying to make me do things that I... I don't think are right. Yeah, moral. Um, yeah. And so there's times like that that I that I do get a little bit angry, but I never let it fester. Yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. So to me, I try to put. I, it's hard for me to put myself into the shoes of someone that is like trying to murder people mm -hmm. or trying to like harm people in any way yeah i don't understand and i do wonder i mean let me let me rephrase that i understand now that most of the people that are doing stuff like that even from my past were all messed up yeah because i'm starting to realize that i've done a lot of stuff in in my life because of my past mm -hmm. And I think the reason why I'm a little bit different is because I actually denied a bunch of stuff. So I was more in denial where I think like a lot of people kind of feed into the abuse or whatever they've got. And so they, they're they feeding into their anger. And I was trying to not be angry. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to not be angry, I wouldn't think about it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like... I can understand where people are coming from, but I can't put my, I can't put my like whole mind into somebody doing something like that because I can't fathom mm -hmm. doing it myself. So it's like, cause I can fat, like, I mean, I can think about me being angry and yelling and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that would make sense, but I wouldn't want to hurt an animal. And yeah. it, it's just weird how, Every, I mean, I get it. Everyone's different. Everyone's gone through different types of abuse and family life and work life. And, you know, I just feel like everyone, you know, can, can benefit from these scriptures. Yeah. Because he's trying to tell us here, you know, really think about it. Like, guys... If, if you're trying to be happy, if you're trying to forgive people, if you're trying to be peaceful, if you're trying to have joy and be content on a daily basis, and it's hard. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's not every day that I'm like, you know, up there in joy land, yeah. you know, but I am most of the time. I yeah. would say probably... Out of my day, I would say 90% of the time, I am all of those things. Nothing's bothering me. There might be so, like 10%. And that's not 10% every day. Mm -hmm. That's what it could be like one day a week. You know, it yeah. depends on what happens. But I don't know. I just, what do you think about these? Well, I think of it as, and you know, this is something he began to teach that means he was teaching them all this stuff, which is, you know, I'm just going to read it, you know, you know, blessed who the ones who are blessed are spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit. Those who devoid or of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Like, in my understanding of that, you know, where it's saying um, those who are poor in spirit, um, you know, regard themselves as insignificant. Mm -hmm. I see it as people who aren't aren't just like, you know, you're not you're the opposite of like having an ego, you so know, humble? well, yeah, in a way, but you're like thinking of yourself as I don't think you think of yourself as like a right, oh, you know, you're better than uh, other people. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't think I'm better than other people. Um, that's that's yeah, I think you're right because yeah. what did you just say before that? 
So ego would be someone thinking they're better than other people. Yeah, like I'm better than you. Everybody has to listen to me. I'm significant. I'm I'm important. I'm important. Um, I need to be here. Mm. Um, And then, uh, Mm. you know, the ones who are blessed, uh, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent. So mm-hmm. right here, it's not just talking about you're mourning over people who die. Like, right. oh, I, f- I have people who died. I cried. I'm good. It's you're mourning over the over your sins and repenting. You're yeah. you're actually like crying because you sinned, and you're trying to repent. You're mourning. You're like, mm-hmm. it's not a happy time because you've understood your sinning. Could that and- also mean like? How sometimes, like, me and you will be talking and we'll remember something that we did. And then yeah. we're kind of like, oh, God, I yeah. wish we didn't do that. Yeah. Is that, I feel yeah, like, Yeah, because it's almost also... like, um, it's like shame yeah. when you see it after you know you've done it. Mm. And when you forgot about it and then it comes back into your mind, right. it's almost like, oh, I wish, <laughs> I, I wish I didn't remember that. <laughs> exactly. But you have to kind of... Um, re like not relive but reintroduce it to your brain for you to understand this is something you did god's not just going to get rid of something you did yesterday and not 20 years ago he's Mm. he's going to go from all of them and that way you can kind of be like okay yeah i would never do that again i'm sorry you know you just you just reminded me i was just gonna use those words you took them right out of my mouth because i was thinking like when i've when when the holy spirit has brought things from my subconscious because like i said i've my whole life i've denied everything yeah so when you deny stuff you try to forget about that stuff but Mm -hmm. really it it just goes in your subconscious i didn't know about this until going to therapy Mm -hmm. and so now that you know the holy spirit i keep asking the holy spirit to bring things from my subconscious into my conscience so i can look at it Mm -hmm. and do exactly what you just said Look at it and be like, would I ever do that again? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. And then if I say yes, then I'm then I'm like, okay, I need to work on that. Please help me. Mm-hmm. But if I say no, then my next thing is, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry that I did that. Yeah. And, my, and I always try to go, if it's something about someone else that I've done, I try to like go and apologize. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like that was my main, and might be other people's problem, but I know for me, I didn't want to uh, take responsibility Mm -hmm. for the things that I was, that I did, because I always tried to blame everything on my past, like, this happened, you know, this happened to you, you Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) stuff like that. So, that, I feel like that's a good, and I've learned this stuff from therapy, you know, and... Also from God, you know, reading the scriptures and stuff. And sorry, go ahead, keep going. I just um, think you just made me think of that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, which one was I at? Uh, you know, the ones who are blessed, inwardly peaceful, mm-hmm. spiritually secure, worth of respect are the gentle, the kind hearted, the sweet spirited, the self controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Mm-hmm. Like, you would want everybody. If you went into the next, you know, if you inherited the earth, Mm -hmm. you would want these kind of people running it, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, and they're self-controlled, you know? Um, Yeah, you're right. But let's see. um, Blessed, the ones who blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, Mm -hmm. those who actively seek right standing with God, for they... For they will be completely satisfied. So we're hungering and thirsting for the righteousness. We see all these injustices happening. We know something's corrupt. Mm-hmm. There's there's some corruption going on because we're seeing what it had said before. Um, if a judge... Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah, if yeah. a judge says somebody who's guilty isn't guilty or somebody who isn't guilty is guilty. Like, we see these happening mm-hmm. And we're, this is where we're like, we need justice. Yeah. Well, we need what God gave us where he's saying. We definitely saying, need God's justice. Yeah. Because you can tell that the justice system mm-hmm. in in here, like, isn't, 
going the right way. Right. Like they're there's definitely, something wrong. Yeah, there's definitely something um, wrong. And we're we're thirsting for the righteousness. We know there's people out there who should be held accountable, mm-hmm. who aren't, and there's people who are being held accountable yeah. for things they didn't know or they didn't like. Right think about the the January sixth. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're, it's one thing if they truly were just breaking in and entering, exactly. but if you see the footage, they're being like brought let in. in. They're in. just if you were to be like, well, okay, if hey, these cops are letting me in police are letting me in well it seems more like i'm welcome to be there exactly you know? and not for nothing but wouldn't you want to go into the into the state house yeah like, like i mean i don't want to go yeah, but i'm just saying if i wanted people, to go yeah people who want to see that yeah and there happen to be there like those and are the people who are probably going to these rallies yeah. you know where they're like Woo, i get to go in yeah there. and so awesome. um but people are being treated bad when they shouldn't be, um, we understand this is happening, and we are actively seeking right standing with God. We, as individuals, know that we have done injustices, we have sinned, um, we have been mean to people, we've ignored people, um, talked bad about people, hurt, you know, we've done all these things, and we understand I did this and I feel terrible, so I want, to, I, right? If you don't understand you're doing something and then you figure it out, right before you figure it out, you were doing all this and now you want to have a right standing with God. You know all this stuff I had just done is wrong. Is this, if I stayed with this, I would not be um, standing with God. Now I am actively trying to seek my right standing with God. I'm trying to actively walk towards the person who is for like forgiven and is done with all the sin and all this. I'm walking towards that man, which is me in the future, but you know, just the present in forward. Um, so it's like, you're actively trying to be in your soul. Like, okay, now I'm not doing these things. I can feel comfortable because I have that feeling I'm right with God because I am following what he wants. Um, you know, the blessed, the content, sheltered by God's promises, are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. And this is kind of what you were talking about. Like, we don't wake up and just want to hurt somebody and stuff like that. That's a sick mind. Mm-hmm. That's a mind that's so far away from God. But, you know, there's things that happen in your day. Somebody cut you off in traffic. Mm-hmm. In that moment, you're just like, oh, like, <laughs> why would somebody even do that? What makes them, you know, but we don't understand where they're coming from. They might be late. Yeah. They might be somebody's, their wife's yeah. having a child. Yeah. They knew they had just that minute, bit of time to get right in front of you. And it looks bad on your part mm-hmm. when you see it because it's happening to you. But if you go into your mind and just, you know, it could be that the person is just being a jerk. Mm-hmm. But in your mind, you can be like, dude, they might be in some type of danger. They mm-hmm. could be, you know, like I said, their wife is pregnant, their mom's in the hospital. Something happened where they need to get from point A to point B. And we're not to judge them anyway. So yeah. I don't, like, I don't, you, you see, now you're bringing up like road rage type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And I've seen so many people. And yeah, I used to do that. That do that. And I have never, I've never been the type of person that has, you know, been like, oh, let me ride up the other person's butt, mm-hmm. you know, and make them get out of the way. Yeah. I would rather pull over mm-hmm. and let them go around me. I did. At some time in my life, jeez, I was probably like in my 20s, yeah. um, and and I used to like, I was mad. I was mm-hmm. mad at the world mm-hmm. back then. And yeah, I did, I would slam on my brakes if somebody got really close mm-hmm. to me. And now I think about it, like, what a terrible thing to do, because mm-hmm. I didn't know who, like I had, you know, kids in the car, mm-hmm. and I had, you know... They they might have had kids in the car, mm-hmm. but I wasn't even thinking about it. You know, it's like a like you said, a split second where mm-hmm. someone like cuts you off or whatever. But it it's... yeah, I used to be able to. You know, somebody would cut me off. I would do what you just said. I'd get, I'd ride them, and then I would just make them think I'm so angry. Like we're about to fight if you ever pull over. You know, try to scare them, follow them for a little bit. Um, all these things. Um, 
but thank God. Think nothing. about that. Like, how but ridiculous yeah, it's, does it, it sound it, now? And exactly, you know, <laughs> when you think about the things we do when we're yeah, angry, it's actually cringy. Mm. It's actually like, ugh. I know. And so we understand in our inner being, we're not supposed to be doing this stuff. Mm. This ain't coming from God. Mm -hmm. And so, and what was I? Uh, merciful. Mm -hmm. So it's the ones who can take the, they pay the debt of the person. Yeah. Somebody cuts you off. I forgive oh, yeah. that person. That person may be in danger. Mm -hmm. I forgive them. I pay that debt that mm -hmm. they owe me. They, that sorry that they, sh that I feel like they owe me that sorry. They should get out and hit their knees and, and <laughs> praise, you know, like it, those things, we don't need that. We just need to understand this happened. You both Let are, you both didn't die. You didn't get into an accident. It might've, you know, but it didn't happen. And then you just forgive that person. You pay that debt for them. Um, and you're being merciful. You're, you're giving mercy. It's like, you know, you fit, you think in free will, well, I can go hurt this person or I can tell them and scare them and follow them. But this is not, that's not being merciful. That's being hateful. Um, so then, you know, the blessed anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature are the pure in heart those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. You know, we're anticipating God's presence. We're spiritually mature. We understand what we're doing is wrong. And we we know God's going to come back. And we are anticipating it. We, we're just like, yo, I know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to be right with God. So when we are anticipating God, it's good. It's like, yeah, like, come back, come back, because we know all this stuff is injustice. We know there's brutality going on. There's all this stuff happening. Um, where was I? And so are the pure in heart, those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character. You know, integrity. You know, you're not going around, you know, stealing stuff because nobody's looking. You know, you're the one nobody's looking and you're picking up something and putting it back without nobody looking you're not doing it for other people to see you're doing it because it's right you know there's something out of place i'm here it's out of place near me i'm gonna do it i'm gonna fix whatever i can fix right now you know uh, moral courage you know that's the whole calling somebody out when they're being immoral you know if you have a friend family they're doing something that is immoral. You should be able to show them what's moral, tell them what's moral. That courage, the whole thing where it says, um, everybody's scared to do something, even the courage, but the courage is courage because it still doesn't, even though it's scared. That's courage. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm scared to say, hey, you're lying a lot. Hey, you're doing this, you know? Um, well, that's because, see, and you say stuff like that and mm -hmm. it reminds me of like what I'm working through. I have always been more worried about hurting the other person, person's feelings mm -hmm. than sticking up for myself. Yeah. Like having that, moral courage where i'm like hey don't treat me like that mm -hmm. you know what i mean i instead of me saying stuff like that i would just let people treat me however because i thought well i don't want to hurt their feelings mm -hmm. you know and i don't want that person one i don't like confrontation so i i had like this huge i think like Satan was, you knew that I didn't like confrontation, so I'm not going to be the person that would stand up for myself mm. because it might cause an argument. Or tell somebody, Which hey, I, I know you're lying. Because <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's always going to cause that person to erupt. Exactly. You know, Especially if they're doing it. I remember I had said something in my music one time where I said, tell a liar that they're lying and they'll lie some more. Mm. Um, so let's see. Uh, and godly character. You know, we know how God wants us to present ourselves and to conduct ourselves. And when we walk this earth, you go to the store, you go to church, you go to a, even, you know, somewhere in a waiting room. You know, you're doing all these things out in the world in front of people. And if you conduct yourself in the character of God, people are going to notice. They're going to say, why is this person, you know, and they Not might even, the yeah, everyone else is acting. you know, you're, you're 
you're not walking along with the sheep. You're walking with the shepherd. And so these people want to continue to be guided and all this stuff. And you understand that I just have Jesus. Jesus already told me how to present myself, how to conduct myself. And then you might even have people who ask, whoa, you must have, you must have great parents. You know, you're so respectful. It's like, well, you know, I'm following God's character. You know, I found Jesus or Jesus led me to him. Um, and so I figured out these characteristics and I'm going to apply them in my life as I walk around. Um, and then, uh, bless spiritually calm with life, joy, and God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. This kind is like what I was just saying, the makers and maintainers of peace. You know, there's times where I've been around people arguing, but I've always been able to, even as a kid, see both points of view and then understand this was the right one. This is the right one. And it's almost like you have to kind of be like, look, man, look, uh, Peter, um, he's only saying this. You took it the wrong way because he said it like this. So he's not meaning it like that. He kind of is saying this. Am I right? Yeah, that's how I'm doing. See, man, he's just, you're kind of, don't be mad. He, it's just, you, you, you got offended mm -hmm. and now your fight or flight is blocking mm -hmm. out the fact that you should understand what this person is saying. He may have said it wrong. But what he's saying is this, and it's kind of like you make the peace. It's almost like their inner being has to calm down because it's like, oh, okay, you're you're being told a certain way. Hey, look, you know. You so just you're... reminded me of yesterday's video, or the when we were doing chapter four, when I yeah. said, um, if it doesn't matter who said it mm -hmm. or how they said it. It's what did they say yeah. and is, is it the truth? Yeah. Is what somebody said the truth? You got to learn to stop being so uh, offended. Yeah. Like everyone's so offended now. Yeah. You can't say nothing. Mm -hmm. People get so pissed off now. But like we also got to understand this might be a media thing because most of the people are still going to these comedy shows. They're, you know, the majority of the people aren't being offended. It's the small minority who have now media attention, where now it seems like everybody, you can't say anything, but mo the majority of people want to say whatever they want. Right, you know, right, So right. it's only a small few. So um, maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called sons of God. So it's like, it's a mixture of saying like, hey, look, he means this, but also expressing his character, God's character. So, you know, it's almost like that. You're... You're taking away their anger. You're trying to defuse a situation. Well, because what does it say? That Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. And so, if we're supposed to be follow, expressing his character, then we need to be the Prince or Princess of mm -hmm. Peace. We need to be that peacemaker. Yeah. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I feel like I try to cause peace yeah. because I don't like arguments yeah. i don't like when everyone's in a bad mood yeah like i actually like when everyone's in yeah a good mood. think about it think about going on a family trip or yeah. you're going with your friends and then something happens where it makes everybody miserable yeah. now think about that trip that's like a uh yeah. the trip beforehand was gonna be so awesome everybody was happy we're all going to point b mm -hmm. together we're gonna have all this fun everybody wants option a they want to be in the car with people who are happy, and now we're going to go enjoy something all together. Mm -hmm. We get to share our remarks as the day goes, and then we can drive back and talk about what just happened. You know, this is what we want. We don't want the arguments and then the silence, and then it's miserable and awkward, and yeah, then it's and like, what's weird. going on? There's like a bad vibe in the yeah in, in the every, area and you know and this is a whole thing of nobody likes bad yeah. nobody likes bad you know but this makes me think of like when you're saying that it when you say that and people think well i gotta make sure everybody's happy mm -hmm. no you just have to make sure you're happy like i have to worry about me if i'm happy and i can keep myself happy and not blow off at anybody and cause an argument 
and you're with me and you can control yourself mm-hmm. and then the other person controls themselves we should all be fine There's it's when you try to uh kind of control delegate. the whole yeah you kind of trying to th- you think because it's the way I used to be. Mm-hmm. I used to think I needed to make everybody happy. I was the one that had to like, it was all on my shoulders, mm-hmm. which would then make me miserable. Yeah. <laughs> but now I've come to realize that I only have to worry about me being happy. Yeah, there's a, um, I think his name was Jim Rohn. Um, I showed you some videos on him. But there was one good part where he was saying, you know, most people will be like, I'll treat you good if you treat me good. Mm. Um, But he was saying that him and this guy used to say, I'll treat myself good or I'll, I'm going to like fit. Yeah, that's what it was. Like, I'll fix me to help you. Mm. You fix you to help me. Exactly. So instead, it's not like I'm trying to be like, hey, John, do (laughs) this, do this. You know you should do this. So you do that because that's going to help me. It's like going to work and you, it's just you and this other person and you both have a specific duty and this person isn't doing their duty. Now you have to do their duty and your duty, you know, you want that person to do their part so you don't have to do more. Yeah. yeah. It's like, just do you yeah. and do it right. So it will help me and I'll do me and do my part right. So it helps, so it helps you. Exactly. You know? Cause then the day goes by fast. Yeah. Right? And it's just easier. Um, yeah, that's funny. You know, all right, so blessed, the comforted by inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever. And this is that inner peace. This is when you're not, you understand God's got you. Jesus died for your sins, so I believe in Jesus. I know he's my Lord and Savior. I should have a calmness in my spirit. Because I know I'm good. Yep. So, and then now I'm going to actively seek God, a, a right standing with God. I am uh, joyful and anticipating God's presence. And I also have a calm peace in my spirit because I know that I'm doing what God wants. I'm, I'm, what were you going to say? I was going to say that reminds me of like, so with all the stuff going on in the world, I can see the stuff in the world and not be affected. Mm -hmm. I still have the peace inside of me Mm -hmm. because I know that the, that the war has already been won. Mm -hmm. So even though it seems like we're getting ready to go into world war three, there really isn't going to be a world war three. Like it's, It's all the battle has already been won by Jesus. So, like I said the other day, we're just waiting for the physical to catch up to the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So, I don't really like worry. Like, I watch stuff and I'm like, oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. And I actually watch things because I want to pray for people. Um, but there, but I still don't get freaked out Mm -hmm. anymore. Like you, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's like you're watching it from a distance. We know that when you have God's grace, you know, you understand how much Jesus loves you. Um, he doesn't want nothing to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And so, and then there is a scripture where it says like God's hands will cover you or Mm -hmm. something in that realm where it's like, these things will go on. But none of them will even come into your, your. Uh, oh, that's Psalm ninety one. Yeah, like it's not going <laughs> to come into that, your being. Yeah. Like nothing's going to be that's around right. you. Nothing's going to affect you. These, you know, quote unquote, the locusts aren't going to touch you. That's funny because um, let me let me look that up because it is Psalm ninety one because. Um, Psalm ninety one. Oh, I put eighty one, oh, yeah. but you know what I meant. <laughs> hold on, actually, I, I just go in here because I'm already in here. Oh, so hold on. on. Watch. I'm going to show you what. Psalm 91. Because it it clearly says in here that... Let's see. It's right here. It says that nothing... So the pest... So it it starts right here. So you will not be afraid of the terror at night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction, sudden death, that lay waste at noon... A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. 
you will only be a spectator. So someone that looks with their eyes, a witness to the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. See, if, if you know you're under God's protection... Well, just wait, wait, look at Because you have made the Lord, who is my yeah. refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. That's what no I'm saying. evil so you will befall to. you. So you have to... So this is the whole thing about... You, once you know that Jesus died for you and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you realize religion isn't what God's looking for, he's looking for a relationship with you as if like a husband and wife or a, a mother and a child or you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he's looking for the, a really intimate relationship where you can talk to him like we're talking, yep. right? And which I do all the time. So now I know that I am protected. I I always say this over the house and everything, like over everyone, because I don't really want to watch anybody get hurt, mm -hmm. right? So like I'm so I'm I'm not too fond that I'm that it says a thousand is gonna fall at my side and ten thousand you know around mm -hmm. me or whatever. I don't want anyone to fall, but. I don't, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want anybody to get hurt, mm -hmm. which is why I pray, but I can't stop it. Like everyone has their choice, mm -hmm. you know, so hopefully it doesn't happen and hopefully it isn't this many people, you know what I mean? Like I'm hoping that people come to Jesus before it's too late. Yeah. So... But this is what reminded me of the other one. That yeah, and, I, and then I just do want to read a little bit more because it says, uh, No evil will befall you, mm -hmm. nor will any plague come near your tent. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe the tent is your body. That's right. There is the nothing. Plague, did we worry about the, the COVID? No, no I shot. No, I didn't worry no about booster. any of that stuff. I knew... Um, through, you know, it would be part of my testimony, but through how I healed certain, you know, God healed me. Um, I just knew I never need to go to the hospital. I don't need to take medicine. Um, God gave me a body and this body heals itself. And um, I allowed my body to heal itself and I can see God through it because there's like no scars. There's no... It's almost like you have to look really deep and it's almost like uh, you can only see this because it's just proving I was it really happened. Exactly. But look at the rest of this. This is purely brand new. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I haven't been sick since 2009. The occasional food poison and if I've rushed chicken or something and ate it and would, you know... I'm not going to get to it because I don't know how many people want to hear that. Right, but, right, right. <laughs> but, you know, um, I had, you know, I had mono in my second year in ninth grade, which was in 2009. We went to the hospital. I got medicine. Um, and then it made my face, half my face swell up. And I just remember going, I'm not, I don't want to do this no more. Um, and then what the next time I got hurt, I was like, I don't want medicine. I don't want this stuff. And the next time I got hurt, I got ran over by a three wheeler. So that will be coming in my testimony, but, um, either way. So are we on the last one. Yeah. Um, the blessed morally courageous and spiritually alive with life, joy with life, joy in God's goodness. Are you when people, Oh wait, pretty much blessed are you. Mm -hmm. And so the morally courage, uh, courageous and spiritually alive with joy, with life, joy and good. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Anyways, so start um, that again. So just say blessed or the. Um. So we'll put forty eight so we can remember. Oh. All right. So blessed, um, which is morally courageous and spiritually alive with life, joy and God's goodness, are you when people insult you and persecute you? And falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me, meaning Christ. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible. For in this time, for in the same way, 
they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this, you know, I have told people, um, I believe in Jesus, you know, and them not saying like, oh, me too. Mm. Um, and just knowing like, oh, I feel like they're probably thinking something bad about me now. Um, because now of my association with Jesus, I believe in Jesus. Some people are going to go like, this guy, like I'm not talking to this guy no more. We can't say nothing around this guy. Uh, can't be cool around this guy. Um, but those make me happy because it is stated in scripture that when you are booed because of Christ, you should jump for joy because it's written that you have a reward in heaven and it is great, absolutely inexhaustible. Can we look up? I'm actually kind of uh, inexhaustible. I have like an idea of what that means, but I just want it to make more sense in my head. I think it might mean like, um, what? I'm not yeah. saying anything because my luck, I'll probably be wrong. Let's see. <laughs> Unable to be used up because existing in abundance. Oh, wow. that's what I thought it meant. All right, so you just so, have... So absolutely, abundantly too much. Greatness. Yeah, like you're Like ne- that's like how big... Your end. reward will never end. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. you have the biggest reward. <laughs> it, right. It's, you can't use it up. Like it's, um, so this is why you should be happy because the prophets who were before us, they persecuted them. Mm -hmm. The ones who were really writing about, didn't they get like their heads chopped off and one wanted to be crucified upside down. He didn't even want to be crucified the same way as Jesus. He didn't feel he was righteous enough to, or I don't know about righteous, but I don't know how they got crucified. I don't know how, but I just know that they got, they went through very bad torture Mm -hmm. because they had an association with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They saw Jesus rise from the dead. They saw him after. And, you know, these are the things that they would preach to people and they knew it was true. So people, and it's said before, people don't die for a lie. If I knew I was lying and they were like, we're just going to shoot you in the head. It's like, all right, dude, all all right, fine. I'm, I'm, I didn't I didn't see this frog turn into a caterpillar, you know, um, but people who know the truth and you're dealing with not just some guy down the street who stood up. You're talking about God, the eternal being like the eternal alpha and omega. You don't want to lie against God. Mm-hmm. That's like, no, kill me because you can't do nothing after that, which That's is said right. in the in the yeah. scripture. Don't fear the person who can only Ooh. kill the body but do nothing less. Mm-hmm. Fear the Lord for he can kill the body and then, pu- like, uh, what is it? Like, put your soul into hell. Mm. Um, I just had another one, but that's a good one, too. Um, I don't know how which uh, which parts it it's, it's right. in. D- what you said is good because I... yeah. So it's like um, I f- kind of forgot where I was going though. We were just about to look that up. Well, you just you just ended with that. Okay. General, that's he does say that. Like oh oh, that's the one I was trying to look. Hold on a minute. Nice. Don't say anything because <laughs> I started talk. I like forget. Hold on. It's um. Uh, whoever. Whoever seeks to save his life will eventually lose it through death. And whoever loses his life in this world will keep it for the consequences of sin and separation from God. This is the one I was thinking about because yeah. it says, like, you're saying, like, oh, okay, I didn't really see that caterpillar yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But because God sees mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. It's better for you to like die now. Yeah. If someone's gonna this this is what I've always said. If someone is gonna shoot me, mm-hmm. I don't want anybody to try to like go after that person mm-hmm. and revenge me because God's already you know what I mean? Like God's already gonna bring me into that 
Are you looking up one? Yeah, do uh, Matthew 10, 28. This is what I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and the body in hell. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. So it's like, you know, if you know it's the truth, mm-hmm. you know, if Jesus came to you, and, you know, did something, you know, it should just be Jesus showing up, should be able to be like, okay, I see him. Um, but if you saw him do something, and then he said, go tell people when they ask you what happens to tell them it was me. And then you go, uh, It was me. <laughs> yeah, and no, it, whatever it is, like, you know, people are saying, like, did you see this? And you're like, yeah, and they're like, we're going to kill you. If you keep lying mm. and you're like, I'm not lying. I literally saw this happen and you, you know, it's God. So you, you know, God is greater than the people who are going to kill you. You're just scared of losing your life. So right. you might do the thing where it just said in the other one you yep. saw, I'm going to try and save my life. Okay. I didn't see him do it. Phew. Now I get to live, but guess what? Your soul's going to die. Mm-hmm. You know, you are going to go to hell for going against God. So these prophets, they understood. I, I was with the Messiah. Right. I walked with him. I saw him brutally murdered. And then I saw him laid in the tomb. Right. And then the third day he came and visited a bunch of us, you know, proving he was God, mm-hmm. proving that everything he did um, was because he was God. And then I saw him rise, you know? So it's like these people wanted them to, like, lie and say they didn't see it, but they saw it. So they were willing to die for it. And like it said, the ones who lose their life according to, what was it? Like, uh, pretty much if you lose your life because of Christ, mm-hmm. you you should be happy that you're dying. Because you're like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with it. Mm-hmm. It's going to suck because my flesh has nerves and right. I'm going to feel this stuff. But... The reward I'm going to get for yeah, losing my life for Christ, knowing I didn't turn my back on Christ. You know, nobody wants to be a Judas. Nobody. And, uh, and I think that was like the last one. That in was. That. I wanted to say this about the next. So uh, Matthew five thirteen. Yeah. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its purpose. Right. Mm-hmm. This reminds me of if I tell somebody something. And I might be mean. That's what this is talking about. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. So it means like salt. When you use salt on food, Mm. it gives it better flavor. Mm -hmm. It makes it more palatable. Mm -hmm. It makes people want to eat it. Um, And so the whole thing about using tactfulness to try to tell somebody when they're doing something wrong is... Easier said than done. Mm. This is why you you have to like get past the whole. If somebody says it the wrong way, don't be a big baby about it. You know what I mean? Like just you know, just listen to what they're saying instead of you know instead of um, just throwing away everything. Like he's saying, because if it loses its salt, then you just use it to put salt on the ground when it snows. You know what I mean? Like you don't. You don't use the salt again to put yeah. it on the food. I see it as like kind of like um, your purpose, your salt, you know, is to be according to God and acting in his character. If you lose that purpose, technically you're sinning because to want to not be in Christ's character um, means you want to do things for yourself. And I think that you lose your taste, which is the purpose. You're not following God. You're following yourself. You're following your own desires. Well, that's going to lead you to hell, which is the whole you're walked on. You're, you know. Mm. Um, well, that would make sense too. People walk people on. Will, yeah, people will walk on you. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, <laughs> you know, true. you're technically damning yourself when you don't try to be like Christ. Um, and all, all Christ wants is an effort. You know, he wants you to make that effort, like an actual effort, not just because we go, hey, follow Jesus. No, there's something in you that's going to go, let me look into this Jesus guy. Let me, uh, 
I've been hearing about Jesus. I'm going to look into it. And then something happens when you're looking into it that brightens you like, whoa, wait. Now you have an admiration to find more, to look more, to knock on more doors, not Jehovah Witness style, but like, <laughs> you know, knock on doors to find God. You want to actually seek Jesus. And then when you find out, okay, he wants us to act this way. Okay, I act this way, which is not according to God. So every single part of me that doesn't act according to God, I need to pick up my cross. I need to crucify my old way of being and be with Jesus. I need to kill the, metaphorically kill, um, the old you, right. um, the part of oh, you, so that means you, just went, okay, go ahead. you know, it's like the whole, you being rebirthed because God rebirthed. He, uh, was born or oh, not rebirthed, but like, uh, you know, he came back on the third day, uh, resurrected, you know, it's almost like you're going to put that up on the stake and then you're going to resurrect yourself with Christ. Yeah. Right here. Be um, trans- oh, it's kind of funny. It's weird, that's but. funny. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It is Romans 12, though. Let's see. That's funny. They heard us. Romans 12. Oh, wait. Yes. Let's see. Yeah, so it says right here, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies dedicated all of yourselves set apart which is funny mm-hmm. um as a living sacrifice holy and well pleasing to god which is your rational logical intelligent act of worship and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on God's values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. I just want to point out, I did not know the scripture existed, but if you think about it, everything the Holy Spirit just sent through me is like right identical mm-hmm. to this scripture. That's why I said it just brought you. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit and brought it, it, this. This to is life. what we're talking about. The Holy <laughs> Spirit works through us mm-hmm. because we're actively trying. You know, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Right. The helper points you to, G- to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And to go to Jesus is to find the truth. That's right. And we have certain things in us um, that we don't know. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. When I'm speaking, I'm speaking in a way of I'm letting something speak through me and I know it's the Holy Spirit. Um, my mind is almost blank and I'm hearing this at the same time you're hearing this. So when I was just saying all this stuff and then it popped into your head, you know, praise the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, it popped into your head and then you looked it up and it just so happened to be like identical <laughs> exactly. to That's, what I ju- what yeah. the Holy Spirit just said through me. Um, this is what I was saying about my music. When I started to want to just not be like my music be all about sex, drugs, hate, all this stuff. That's when God really started putting these um, definitions or not definitions, but like he put a word in my head. And I would never have heard this word before. I'd be like, what is this word? Let me look it up. And then, boom, it just so happens to be the perfect word, perfect syllables. It was like, what? And uh, and this is what I mean. Like, God, through the Holy Spirit, is helping us. We are getting closer and closer. And that's why I was saying, you know, every day you're trying to change. You're trying to eliminate the old you, the one that was sinning, and be born again to Christ, to walk like Christ, to be um, a living example and portray the character of Christ knowing that you're pleasing God, you're pleasing Elohim. Um, And that's just a nice little, you know, gift right there. Mm. Let's move on to, so the light of the world, right? Yeah. So that makes sense to me, like, obviously. If if there's a be- so it reminds me of like a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. The lighthouse is kind of like helping the boats yeah. right see where they're going. Yeah. So we he wants us to be the light 
you know, mm-hmm. his light, really. Because if you think about it, what does it say? God, is, Jesus is the light. Yeah. And so if he's the light and he's inside of us, mm-hmm. well, how can we show that he's inside of us? We have to be the light. We yeah. have to be the light. And what did it say before? Nobody lights a light and then puts, puts it underneath it. a basket. Yeah, that means you of, have yeah. the light, but you're like, eh, I'm not going to share this. Yeah, uh, you, you find know, out something. It, it right here, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Mm-hmm. You know, the house of God. You know, that just, you, so it says, no, does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket? Like that is that meaning like I found the truth and I'm not sharing it with people? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I See, believe. See, this is why I think these these videos are wonderful. Yeah. Because I don't want to. I've worked with people mm-hmm. that have gotten information and instead of sharing it with the rest of us. Mm-hmm kept it to themselves yeah and i thought to myself that's so stupid like Mm -hmm. why don't you share it with everyone because if you share it then we'll all know the truth or we'll all know the new way of doing it and we won't make mistakes Mm -hmm. so that's like this like if we if we know that god's the light and we have the light in us and we don't show it Mm -hmm. and we keep it to ourselves yeah, like we might as well put it in a basket. Yeah. Because no wonder, no wonder, you know, I like that he says no one would, wants to put it under a basket. You should yeah. put it on the. What's the next one say? Uh, Do not think that I came away. Oh, see, remember I. So yeah. this one here is what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. That Jesus came to fulfill mm-hmm. the laws and the prophecies. So he's saying, I came not to destroy it, but to mm-hmm. fulfill them. So he's he never said that all the people in the first century and all those people, like they, that they shouldn't be doing the law. Mm-hmm. No, he said, yes, I'm glad you were doing the law because yeah. you guys had the Ab- Abrahamic law. Mm-hmm. Like we gave you yeah, the law. Yeah, it said, do not think that I came here to do away with yeah. or undo the law of Moses. Mm-hmm. That means even though he fulfilled it, doesn't mean he destroyed it where we don't have to follow it. That's like the Ten Commandments, yeah. right? It's these things were set for us forever. Right. And, and so. Set for the, so he fulfilled the Abrahamic law and the Mosaic law. Yeah. Because those are the two that came before jesus so he's fulfilling those laws and this is why i feel it's sad for some of the people that just go by the torah Mm -hmm. because the torah is just the five first books of the bible but they're missing out on all of the stuff that jesus did yeah they're still doing all of those laws Mm -hmm. when jesus clearly says here that he came to fulfill them Mm -hmm. and they have been fulfilled Mm -hmm. you know and so Hopefully, if anyone's listening to this and you're still, you know, you're still going by the old laws, like, please look into the Bible. Please start at Matthew (laughs) and start reading the new covenant that we have because it's, it's way better. It's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's instead of having to worry about all these laws don't, doesn't everybody want to get rid of the laws? Like, geez, there's so many laws that we have. Well, we want to get rid of unjust laws, you know. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm reg- the other laws, what does Jesus say? He said the only two important laws that we have now to love our God, right, with mm-hmm. all our heart, and to love one another as ourselves. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with those laws. Yeah. I don't want to have to, like, worry about the whole, like, you know... Well, I think mainly those two laws represent everything else. Because if you think about it, if I love God with all my mind, heart, and soul, Mm -hmm. and body, Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to want to hurt somebody. I'm not going to want to lie to them. Especially if I love others like I love myself. I don't want to hurt somebody. I don't want to betray somebody. I don't want to lie to somebody, steal, da, 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 da. Like, all these other things that are bad won't happen. So it's like those are the two greatest things right. because if we just follow those two, everything else goes away. All the evil goes away because we would all love God, which means we'd be reading his word, understanding what he wants us to do, and we'd be loving one another. 
where we're not going to hurt nobody, you know? We're not going to be the one cutting somebody off in traffic. We're going <laughs> to wait. You know, it's going to turn to that, where we're all considerate of each other. Um, let's see. So now we're on, this is the whole personal relationship. This is what I was talking about. So this part of the scriptures is pretty much talking about don't murder, don't do the adultery, yeah. don't divorce, divorce, and all this stuff. And I will pick out verse 31 because when I was growing up, I was brought up Catholic. My mom got divorced and the priest told her she couldn't come back to the church. So we never went back to the church. And then when I got older and I had children and I was married... I went back to that church that I got baptized in and everything was going fine. And then I ended up getting divorced, right? And they told me that I couldn't come back. So then we didn't go back. And then years later is when I started to study the Bible with the Jehovah Witnesses. And when we were going over the Bible and it came, came to this part where Jesus was saying this, and I thought to myself, Hey, wait a minute. This literally says, whoever divorces his wife to give her a certificate of divorce, I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery. When I heard that, I was like, wait a minute. I got divorced because my husband was cheating on me. Mm -hmm. Sexual immorality. Yeah. And I told that to the priests at the church do you think they would know this since they're the priests mm -hmm. but they didn't even accept that which they should know because it clearly says here that <laughs> that's the only ground that he would be like no you know what i mean so anyway i yeah. i just think that that's and this again, also you know it does make sense too because if you think about it you know, God wants you to marry somebody you're going to be with forever. Right. And so, technically, if you, if one of you, you know, is not cheating, mm -hmm. um, but you divorce, like if the guy divorces, he's making her, uh, what is it, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery because they're supposed to stay together. They were supposed to be together forever. So How you're technically not supposed to be with another man. <clears throat> so it's just like you, you want to stay together because you love each other. But then it's like, hey, if we break up, we cannot ever be with somebody again. You and know? this is why people need to wait for God yeah. to bring your better half to you. Yeah. Because only God knows who he made for you. Yep. Like he knows he made us and we are all like impatient. Mm -hmm. Like we're all impatient and we all are thinking, no, no. Oh yeah. God brought me this person. Yep. And then it doesn't work out. And then the next thing you know, you know, this is why, <laughs> they, you know, they never elaborate, but they will be like, um, you got to, once you start working on yourself, then, then your person will come. And it's like, yeah, well, if you, the, I think the deeper root of that is if you start trying to go to God, mm -hmm. which is why would God give you the godly woman when you are being a Ungodly. son of the devil? Yeah, exactly. And so <clears throat> once you start to, okay, now I'm going to, you know, right now I'm, 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 I'm laying belly flat on the ground. I'm crawling to Christ first. Then he starts to pick me up. Mm -hmm. Now I'm walking with Christ. You know, when you're trying to get picked up by Christ... Um, you're, you're leaving your sin. You're trying to walk away, but you're still on the ground and you're, you're stumbling. Um, but I believe when you start going to Christ and trying to purge your sins, God is sto is slowly bringing your other half to you. Right. <clears throat> the one who you never know, this person might be out there sinning yeah. and you guys are at the same exact path of life where you're figuring out these sins and together not knowing it and you're getting through it at the same time. And then when you finally meet, it's like a whoa. And then you, you, you're with this person forever. You can talk about whatever you see, how God worked through both of you to bring each other together. It's mm -hmm. like, um, what a, what a miracle, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I like that it says, you know, don't make false vows. Like this is something that 
like in verse 37, but let your statement, you know, affirm yes or no. Mm -hmm. That's something that I have, to me, that's, I would consider that boundaries Mm -hmm. because I have never been able to say no to people. Mm -hmm. I have always just let them, I've always like helped everyone. Yep. Okay. Even if it was detrimental to me. Mm -hmm. I still would do it for other people. So this is a huge, a huge thing Yeah. that has, I can tell you that like when you start saying no, <laughs> when you've been the person that's always said yes, yeah. people don't like that. Oh yeah. They do not like that at all. Yeah. And, um, and to be honest, I think it's hardest with the people that know you than someone that you just meet because I can put boundaries on everyone now Mm -hmm. that I don't know because they don't know me. But it's the people that know me that it's the hardest to keep the boundary up because I'm so, I'm so used to being wishy-washy and just doing whatever that it, you kind of want to go back to that because you don't, especially me, I don't want to cause the argument. So it's like, I don't want to cause the argument. People you know, have, especially people that have known me, you know, are like, well, yeah, but she used to do this. So we're just going to keep, you know, bugging her until she finally does it. That's something that, you know, I guess that's kind of maybe that courage that he was talking about earlier that you need the, you know, the courage to be able to say no. I I remember, you know, know, I'd hang out with these, uh, these friends of mine at the time and I used to get annoyed when they'd be like, oh, you want to go do this? And I'd go, no. And then they'd be like, why? I'd be like, what do you mean? I don't need to tell you why. I just don't want to do it. You know, I don't need an ex- I don't need, and it's funny because I didn't know about this, but it was almost like, why do I need to elaborate? Am I saying that right? Elaborate? elaborate. Elab- yeah. I was mm-hmm. going to say elaborate. Um, elaborate. Elaborate on it. It's just a no. If I say no, that should be enough. You heard me say no. And this brings me back to when I was a kid and living in a cul-de-sac, um, we, you know, I'd wake up and I'd have to go knock on the doors of all my friends' apartments so I could see if they wanted to hang out. And if I had like five friends already, but we're knocking on the next door and then they were like, uh, I don't really want, uh, you know, I'd be like, oh no, just stay home. You know, don't come out then because I'm not going to get a hundred percent you. You obviously don't really want to do it. So it's not going to make you, you, you're going to be a deluded you. And I don't want the deluded you. I want you to be excited to come out. Whatever is making you go like, eh, is more important right now. So go do that. And then we'll hang out another time or whatever. You know, mm. I want the hundred percent person, not a, eh, okay. You know, <laughs> then it's like, oh, I feel like I'm forcing you. I don't want to force you. Oh my gosh. That's funny. You um, just reminded me of something I'm looking for. Hold on. Um, but yeah, that's what I believe is like, you say no, you know, um, no is no. I said no. And it's like, if I say yeah, then it's okay, let's go. You know, it's what you, (laughs) that's so funny. So I've learned an acronym, Mm -hmm. um, for this, for the whole, like, say, if you say no, you don't have to, you said, you know, kind of elaborate on it. I I heard of this, it's called Jade. Yeah. You don't have to justify, you don't have to argue, you don't have to defend, and you don't have to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, what a ways easy way. Like if you say no, yeah, and somebody's like, Why? Well, you don't have to justify yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to answer that. You know what I mean? You don't have to argue with them or Mm -hmm. defend yourself or even try to explain it. Yeah. I said no. You said no. Mm -hmm. And people need to take your no for no. Yeah. And not give you a hard time. Yeah. So what else do we got? Uh, Uh, Eye for an eye. Tooth for tooth. You know what's kind of funny about that? Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. I never understood that when I was a kid. My my mom used to say that to me all all the time. Yeah. Tooth for a tooth. And I'm like, what does that mean? Am I giving my tooth to someone else? Like, you're going to punch my tooth out? Like, I don't get it. But I do like the way it's explained here in this. By the way, we're using the amplified version because yeah. it kind of gives you like a little bit more explanation, which I really, I really like. Yeah. So punishment that fits the offense. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, 
Which is kind of what you said earlier. Like, you don't have to punish somebody that yeah. cut off, cut you off, yeah. you know, which is kind of like eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, I guess. Yeah. You'd be you want your justice. Time. You want, yeah. I want that person to pay me back, mm. but you pay that debt, you know, and, you know, um, and especially with this, like, people who are angry with you and all this stuff, you don't resist. You don't, you know, hurt this person. You don't do all this. You just... You know, what it says is you turn the other cheek. You Mm -hmm. show him or her um, that I'm with God. Well, this kind of of reminds me of, like, what I was saying the other day in the video about, like, some of the the people at the congregation, like, they don't talk to me Mm -hmm. now that I'm not in the going to the meetings. When I go into, like, a store... And I see them, I'm happy to see them and mm-hmm. I like want to say hi, but instead they're they're turning the other cheek but in a bad way because they're like, Oh, we're not gonna look at her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But here I'm just like I you didn't do anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm not mad. You're right. And I don't that doesn't fit this. Um <laughs> I'm not really, because they're not trying to hurt you. They're ignoring you. Well, but they um, they are hurting you. Well, them. I guess, yeah, they think that fits the punishment. That yeah. offense fits, they think you should be punished, which is like silence. You don't yeah. talk to this person no more. So I guess, yeah, you're, you're kind of showing, hey, how you doing? You've yeah. already turned the cheek. That means you wiped the slate clean yeah. with them. I know you've been treating me bad mm-hmm. because you're not talking to me even though shifted a couple of whatever times ago you know we were hanging out we were talking and now you might not even know why because you won't let me explain right all this stuff because you think i should be punished and the punishment is not talking to me no more yeah. you know so i guess it does because yeah. you would be turning the other cheek you're, you're wiping their slate clean you're forgiving them mm-hmm. or they're already forgiven so when you see them you're not like Ugh. Yeah, oh yeah you're like hey let me see if this time they'll say hi yeah, to exactly, me you know exactly um what's the what's the last one you, you shall love oh your, this is the love yeah this is the good they one. say that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy mm-hmm. but i say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your father who is in in heaven for he makes the sun rise on those who are evil and on those who are good it makes the rain fall on the righteous and, and the unrighteous um for it is for if you love those who love you what reward do you have do not even the tax collectors do that and if you greet only your brothers what more are you doing not even the gentiles do that you therefore will be perfect um perfect as your, as your heavenly, heavenly father, father. like if i'm only saying if i'm only nice to my family but i'm not nice to a stranger there's a thing where it says if you're going on a date you how does the person treat the waiter mm-hmm. if the if the person treats you good but the waiter bad that person is a bad person they shouldn't be treating people bad and so you know, that's well, so okay so i'm gonna, just for a yeah. quick second I'm going to bring it back to the organization for a minute, the Jehovah Witness, because in verse 47, and if you greet only your brothers, mm-hmm. wishing them good. So, so here it is. They've, I've left. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at them. Mm-hmm. They're, according to them, I'm no longer a sister or a brother, mm-hmm. which doesn't even make sense. But anywho, that's what they think. But they're only greeting the people that go to the kingdom halls mm-hmm. they're not greeting people that are out in the world mm-hmm. you know what i mean so he that he say right here don't do that yeah <laughs> so that's why i don't do it because mm-hmm. i'm still trying to be nice to them right you know what i mean so that what else is this say? yeah so uh this kind of reminds me of did you say this the other day yeah this is what i was trying to, to find, find. Yeah. Oh, that's funny and we looked up a bunch of stuff but it was never this <laughs> yeah, and this funny. is it this is literally you know because god is good and he wanted us to <laughs> be able to talk about it right that's um because so remember do not even the tax collectors yeah, do you that, did say I, that yeah. yeah um but yeah it's like if you're only good to people you know 
Like, how good are you? Exactly. Because you're not going out of your way to be good to people you don't know and right. you might never meet again. And they have no, you know, you might think, well, this person never did anything for me. I don't know them. Why should I do it? Like, you're paying that. You're paying their debt. They might not, they, you know, there's people out there that don't know you. Um, but you're going to help them out anyways, even though because you don't nice. owe them something, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, you're just being, gr- um, not, what does it say? Oh, like, I... You're perfect, you know, in your character. So as your heavenly father is perfect. So you are acting accordingly to the heavenly father's character when you're nice to people who are, who aren't. Um, an immediate family member or friend, you know, you might see somebody sitting alone. When I was younger, um, I remember being in school and it would be like a time where I would see somebody sitting alone and I would just go up to them and I wouldn't even just be like, Hey, you're sitting alone. What's up? I just sit down and just start talking to them. And, um, you know, I brought a lot of people out of shyness because I would talk to them and then I would invite them to hang out with people I knew and then they would end up being like oh okay they'd they'd uh what is it like leave their shell Mm -hmm. um and then just be themselves so you know it's like that I want to bring people it's like it's kind of rude to be like oh I'm only gonna save x y and z but I had the chance to save you know all these other letters Mm -hmm. and so um I was just thinking if, if we could just think to ourselves, how would we want to be treated? Mm-hmm. If I was a homeless person and I was hungry and I had a sign and I was trying to get some money so mm-hmm. I could get something to eat, would I want somebody to give me money? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do I give people money that are doing that? Yes. Not all the time because mm-hmm. all the time I don't have money. Right. If I had money all the time, I would be yeah. helping people. But I, I can only help with what I have and there are times when I feel led to yeah. help people and those are the times when we need to be you know the person that helps because yeah. we don't know what other people are going through mm-hmm. I have no idea what would make somebody homeless I mean geez I used to live in the car mm-hmm. so I know that it can happen to anybody yeah. so yeah I even uh, one of my friends he had an apartment and uh The first time I ever moved out, I actually moved out to go be homeless with my friend. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do it alone. Um, And we slept in his car for a couple days. And then another friend ended up inviting us to live with him. And, uh, you know, he was he was fostered. So his parents weren't his actual parents, but they um, they adopted them. And they, you know, they were uh, they only wanted one, but they found out. He had a brother, and so they adopted both so they could keep him together. So, and then they ended up kind of like adopting us. They let us live there. They let us eat their food. Um, As long as we were respectful and we cleaned up after ourselves and, you know, um, we didn't have to be homeless. Um, But I didn't want my friend to be homeless alone. I didn't want him to be in a car at night alone to himself. I felt like, no, I'm going to... Let me get as much stuff as I can fit also in your car, and then let's go do this. Let's go be homeless together. I got you. Um, and then I I think that's part of it is you're willing to jump inside of a problem with somebody to help them resolve it. Um, and that's kind of what the whole thing is. Somebody needs help, and you happen to be there. Help them. You know, help them with what you have. Like she said, she might not have money, but she might have a sandwich and she go, hey, I don't have no money, but I have food. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's just a matter of trying to help you do what you can. Mm -hmm. Like the whole thing, like, you you know, don't walk by, what was it, the beaten naked man without cleaning him and Mm -hmm. clothing him. Mm -hmm. Um, Just remember, the person that we, we look over could be Jesus. Yeah. You know? He says that, you know, if you've done it to the least, yeah. then you're doing it for me. Yeah. So we just need to remember that he's watching. He's watching us. Mm-hmm. And 
And don't do it just because he's watching you. Just do it because you're changed. Yeah, that's you know the integrity, I mean? yeah. which is godly. You change your integrity yeah. of, hey, I'm, nobody's telling me to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it because I know payback. God's watching. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be happy. It's just there's a thing you should do, mm-hmm. and you do it. You just yeah. don't even think about it. It's the whole, remember the song, What If God Was One, one of was. Us? Yeah, like, really it, it, and think about it. You know, that per these people you're helping out, um, God said you're doing it to him. Mm-hmm. You're helping out somebody. You should be thinking of them as that's Jesus right there, right. hungry. Yep. I don't want Jesus to be hungry. Here you go. Let me give you the last two yeah. pennies like yeah. that woman did. She put two pennies in the offering. Yep. You know, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, an hour and a half. And I think we did good. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I like this. Um, and yeah, I think we can end it on um, Father. Um, we come to you in praise, in thankfulness that we are learning more and more about Jesus, the one who died and rose and took on the key, took the keys of death and Hades and took all our sins and. Um, you know, sacrifice himself to pay our debts to you. And now we have a chance to find Jesus and to walk towards him and grab his hand and start walking with him. Um, I thank you for everybody who's been watching our videos because we know that you're sending them to us as you are sending this stuff to us also through the Holy Spirit because Jesus said that is our helper, that is who we all have, and that is who is bringing us all together to find Jesus so we can be with Jesus, um, our shepherd, our blessed shepherd, the one who took his life or laid down his life for us all. Um, I thank you for everybody who's been watching and commenting. These comments will be answered. We will have a video on these comments. Um, But thank you very much for interacting with what we're doing. Um, We want everybody to come to you, Jesus. Um, This life is not worth living without you. It is dark and miserable and horrible without you, Jesus. Um, We understand That you, you know, everybody wants you to come back. We don't want this no more. Everybody doesn't want bad. We want good. We want righteousness. We don't want deceivement. We want you, Lord. Um, And so I pray this to you, Father, in your holy son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.